My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will see how we can filter messages in Outlook mail messages. We got an Outlook inbox here with around 10 to 12 mails in and we want to filter them. For example, we want to filter by uh, sender's name, sender's email address, dates, subjects and so. Let's see how that is done in UiPath. First we will create a main sequence and we will do that because we'll be creating a lot of subsequences with filters on so uh, for better uh, get a view of it we will do like this so this could be like filter messages in get outlook mail message that will be our main sequence and then we will create some subsequences so our first sequence will uh, filter by sender email address so again we could say by sender email address like this then we will uh, be getting a get outlook mail messages here we will drag this guy in and we will need some variables so go down to variables and we'll create two variables the variables we want to create is a folder minus inbox and the mail account that is rpa test at cloanas dk so this one we could call this str mail folder the value of that will be inbox then we will have a str mail account and that one will be rpa test at cloanas dk yours will of course be different we will uh, set the scope to our outer scope here like this now we can uh, here in the account we can just type in str mail account and uh, Folder. I know the standard is inbox, but uh, if we had had another or we want to change it, then we could just change it here by the variable, like this. Then we want to check some of this here. We want to get all messages, even though they are red, and we'll just get 30. That's We only got 12 in the box, but you can specify what you want here. Then we want to output it to a list of mail messages. So go down here, Control K. You could say list of mails like this. So now we get them, but we want to do something with them. We just want to write out uh, maybe a subject of all mails. So we'll find a for each like this. Drag this guy in. The first thing we will do is change the type argument from object to a mail message. So browse for types. Search for mail message here and choose the one under system.net.mail that's important click ok then we'll delete this body and we could say for each mail you can of course you can just keep item but we'll just say mail and in that will be in our list of mails we just want to write out the subject so find a right line and we will say mail subject to string so now we have no filter on, we will just write out every mail, every subject of our mails here. Let's do that. We can go down to output and we can see that we have written out all subjects. So far, so good. Let's create a log message here as well because we will be creating a lot of sequences. So for a better view of everything, so we'll create a log message and info. And this will say like, Start, uh, start by sender email address, like this. So now we know that uh, when we start this sequence, this block message will pop up in our output. But let's try to apply a filter. And our filter, uh, we apply that here in filter display message. So open the expression editor. And we want to uh, filter by the sender email address. So what we'll do here is that we'll have quotation marks. Then we will have a square bracket like this and we will say sender email address because that's what we want to filter for. So again, we will have the square brackets equals to and then in single quotation marks, we will type in our uh, mail address that we want to filter from so that those ones are the one that we get. So uh, why don't we say that we want to have a uh, Whatever, whenever anti-spam, you know, you know, you know, error sends us a message. I think we got, we got this one here, and we have one here. So we wanna uh, get that mail. Let me copy it here. So that will be our first filter. And let me paste it in here. 
And that's it. So now we will have a filter of this mail address. I can try to run it. So now we should only have two um, lines written out. We can see that this is indeed true. One reason mails in quarantine, one reason mails in quarantine. And those are the subjects of this one. Let me just uh, trim these log a bit. I got a little bit OCD. So now we are done with that. Let's say that we want to uh, filter for, say that we, we want to have, um, maybe we want to uh, anti-spam Euro web hosting, and we also want the mails that Anders Jensen sends to us. Then we will uh, check what uh, this mail is, that, that is, or actually what the RPA test clone on a census. Because then we will just copy this mail. And what we'll do here is that we'll go to get Outlook mail messages again, click the expression editor, and then in these quotation marks, we will say or, and then uh, let me uh, let me just copy the mail in here in another line. Then we will uh, we will just reuse this entire expression, paste it in over here. So and now we will take this mail here, our new mail. Let us delete the lines and replace it from here. So now the filter will be like. If it's from no reply robot unoero.com or if it's from RPA test clone SDK, we can check it out. Let's run it like this. And now we can see that we have uh, four mails. We also got Hey Anders and how to send multiple attachments. We can see Hey Anders is here and how to send multiple attachments is here. So far, so good. Say that we want to filter by sender name. That is, uh, if we go to the mailbox again, instead of uh, RPA test close on us, we will just look at the name. And remember, those one can be the same. People can write whatever they want, so uh, be careful with that. But uh, nevertheless, we will look at it. So let's create a new sequence. And what we'll do is that we'll copy this because we can reuse it. So copy it and paste it in underneath. We can uh, minimize the first one here. And now we can uh, take a look at this. The first thing we'll do is that we'll rename it. So uh, this one will be from uh, by sender name. And in the log, we will just say start by and then sender name like this. And now we can change the filter. So this one will be exact same. We'll just write out the subjects of the mails that we will filter in here. So in the filter, we will, um, we will delete we can reuse some and we will delete some like this. And then we will say instead of send an email address, we will just say from. And then here uh, in our from, we will just say Anas Jensen. That will be all mails from Anas Jensen that we will filter in here. And again, we can use uh, or, uh, or and so we can um, have, uh, let me show you that in a second. Now we will run it and we will only get two results. And we can go to output and we can see that uh, this one was our first result starts by sender email address. And then we go down to start by sender name and we only get the two mails that Anna Jensen sent us. So that is from so far, so good. Then we could uh, let me copy this again and then we will paste it in underneath and we will close our sender name. So now we create a sender email address and a filter by sender name. Let's create a filter from received date. So uh, received date here, and we will change this one as well. Um, received date. I always misspell that, and I can see I did it up here. Sorry about that. Received date like this. Now we can change the filter. We could uh, filter by what time we. Uh, received them and what we'll do is that we'll just say received time and then we'll put in the time say that we want to have all uh, mails uh, from after the, maybe the 8th of march 2020 so this one and over to up here then we'll just say received time is bigger than and then the 8th of march so uh, 2020. You'll probably notice that I put days before month. That's because this received time look at system time. And in Denmark, we have days before months. So that's how I write it. If you have months before days, like in most English speaking countries, then you want to change this. So just uh, 
put this uh, as your system timers. So click OK and we can now run it and we can inspect that we indeed get these mails here. We can go to output, sorry it's a bit slow, and we can see that we now have these mails in here. So far so good. Now we will uh, copy this, we will minimize it and we can put it in again. So now we want to say that we only want to have for the last uh, 24 hours maybe. So uh, what we'll do is that instead of received date, we will say by, uh, let's say by the last day. And this log will start by the last day. Like this. Then in get outlook mail messages, we click the three dots. And we can say that the receive time is still fine. But now we want to um, only be having the last day. So we will delete this. And we're still in the single quotation marks, by the way. Then we'll make quotation marks. Then the plus, like we do with, we want to insert a variable. And this one will be the day time because we don't know what time this uh, workflow will run. So that'll be when it run, we will take from 24 hours back, so one day. Then we'll say now, that will the time now, the time, or date and time of when the workflow runs. Then we'll use the add. We could, you can see here, we can also get from the latest hour, but we'll use um, add days like this. And then we'll just say minus one because we'll uh, subtract one day from the current date and time. Then we'll say to string. And now the tricky part comes because, uh, as I told you before, my date and time format is a little bit different than the .NET. So what we'll do is that we'll, if you got another, if you have an English time um, set up, you'll just do nothing here. But if you got a Danish like mine, where your dates come before your month, then you'll do like this: day, day, month, month, year, 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 hours, hours, minute, minute. And again, if you uh, let me just get this right, so like this. Then we'll have a plus and a quotation mark again. And again, if you're in an English speaking country, like where you have your months first, then don't do this parentheses, just do the other things. So, uh, and let's say that, so this is one is the only, this one is from the last day. And I just made a mail here. So we will only be getting this mail. Hey, Anders, it's blank, by the way. So let's try to run that. <clears throat> Hopefully we will only be getting one mail. And we can see that we indeed got hey Anders. So far so good. Now let's say that we want a specific hour a minute. So maybe we can look at this mail. We want to, at first we will create one from later than 12, 12, that's the time, and then 12, 10. So at the first one we will have no mails and then we will have one mail. Again, we will copy this workflow, minimize it and make another one. So this one will be rename and then we will say, sorry, rename and then we will say like uh, date and time. Like this, we will change the log as well. Date and time. Now we can filter our message here. So uh, what we'll just do here is that we will just uh, go in here and we will, um, we will just specify a an interval we could of course do it uh, again in this uh, it have current date however it will be a little bit annoying to look at it but now you know that you can get today's date like this if you're not familiar with uh, let me just see that we got yeah if you're not familiar with these date times you can watch my .NET date time tutorial i'll put it in the description below but now we want to get all mails say that we want to get all mails mails from the index six of April 2020, so later than and then 12, 12, like this. Remember that will give us uh, nothing because uh, we will uh, be, we have no mails uh, later than 12, 12. So, uh, and we'll just say okay, and we can try to run it again. We can go down to output and we can indeed see that we got no mails here in the start by date and time. However, if we change this in this filter to 1210, we will be getting exactly one mail. We can run it. And we can go down to output again and we can see that we indeed got our mail. Say that we now warned uh, an interval. So again, copy this and minimize it. Sorry here. 
So now we want an interval. So by rename, sorry, rename, and then we'll say interval. So our filter will be an interval. Just uh, paste in interval here. And what we'll do is that say that we want all males from maybe their 7th of um, February to their 20th of February. So this will, will be these two here. What we'll do is that we will have the received time. That will def The first one was just the 7th of February 2020. We will just uh, be getting rid of this time. It's not relevant now, but you can add it. So now we have a... Uh, so we know that it's later than the 7th of uh, February 2020. So that's so far so good. And it needs to be before the tr uh, 20th of February. So uh, we will have a, an AND here, like this. And then we will just copy this receive time, like this. We'll copy that in over here. And what we'll do is that we'll say it's less than um, the 20th of March, the uh, 20th of February 2020, like this. So now I've got an interval, we'll only be getting the two UI path mail that we have here. We are running and we can go down here in output and we can see that we indeed got the two UI path uh, mails. So uh, let's create a filter for the subject. So copy this one again, minimize it. Paste in another filter, so rename, and then we'll say subject, right? Subject, and this log will start by subject. Um, our filter say that we, we need to find a subject that we want to have. Say that I want uh, this UI path appoints Ted uh, Kumit. Then we'll just uh, be searching for this. Of course, we will just have printed out this mail. We can see it, but it could be a bigger mailbox. So in get out of mail messages, instead of received time, we will just have subject. Oh, that went a little bit too fast. And then inside the single quotation marks, I can almost not see it, but I can. Then we will uh, paste in our uh, subject that we want to search for our filter. This could be anything. Then we will run it. And by the way, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about UiPath and RPA. Now down in output, we oh, sorry, we can see that we got um, we got two mails. How's that? Well, we can go into the filter and we can see that we made a bigger one. So uh, we'll just make an equal sign and now we should only get, be getting one result. So uh, run it. And in output, we only got one result. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.